Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. One of the questions I get the most frequently from my students is, how do I structure a song? How can I take this loop that I love, maybe another loop that goes with it, and make something that's longer than 30 seconds? Well, let's look at that today. So there's no reason to reinvent the wheel is an expression, right? People have been making music for thousands and thousands of years, structuring songs and more complicated pieces. I like to go and look at what people have done before me. There's a word I, I'd like you to know, contrafaction. A contrafaction is a piece of music that takes the chord progression from an existing song and composes a new melody over the top of it. A structural contrafaction takes the building blocks of a song, verse, chorus, bridge, solo, and uses that structure to make a new piece of music. In songwriting these days, people are using the word interpolation a lot, and songwriting credit is frequently given to previous pieces of music and composers that inspired a current hit. Well, interpolation is a slightly different kind of thing. It uses maybe the same chords, maybe the same structure. There's a lot to unpack here, but let's take a look at a piece that I think almost everybody knows, the Beatles' Yellow Submarine. I've done a little breakdown of the structure, and I've written a new piece of music that uses that form. It was maybe a little bit too much work, but I'm glad I did it. Let's take a look. So um, I just dropped an MP3 of the song into Logic and went through and highlighted each section. I discovered that the piece happened to be at about 110 to 111 beats a minute. And so I discovered that the form of the tune after a tiny two-beat pickup was verse, verse with a double time and accompaniment, chorus, you all know this song, right? Do I have to tell you what Yellow Submarine sounds like? I had never broken it down, though. And then another verse, back to the halftime, and then an in interesting instrumental break on that verse. Chorus two, an instrumental solo, which actually uses new chords. It's a kind of a bridge. The Beatles were big on the middle eight. Chorus three, repeat chorus and fade. Well, that means to me, in terms of musical material, I've got to have a verse, some verse material. I've got to have some chorus material. And then I think the instrumental breaks, I'll let them relate to that. Well, it wasn't hard for me to come up with a couple of simple chord progressions that I wanted to use for my verse and my chorus. I decided to go with something simple like F minor, B flat minor, E flat for my um, verse. And since that suggested the key of A flat major, my chorus, simply the axis chords in A flat. So A flat, E flat, F minor, D flat, one, five, six, four. Well, I just kind of plugged in and I had to play it, of course. I just plugged it in and this is what I got. Let's follow along. Pick up, verse. Now someone would have to come up with some lyrics, and a decent melody. And then double time that verse. I've said it before, but thank goodness for Logic's automatic drummer. Here comes the chorus, the relative major, add strings. I know it, it works, we go back to the verse. The reason I know it, because it worked for the Beatles. I varied the strings, now you hear the pitch strings? Little instrumental break. And then chorus two, here we go.
So the Beatles used slightly different chords for their middle eight. I had to come up with something. I kind of based it on what I was doing. And then drop down for verse four. I really, I got a song form out of this. It doesn't sound anything like we all live in a yellow submarine, does it? Chorus three. And then this is just, you know, repeat and fade. I was shocked at how much fun that was to do. Um, it took me a little bit of time, not a lot, you know, probably half an hour to figure out the structure and sort of work through how I was going to lay it out in logic. And then, oh, I don't know, dropping in some chords that worked within the existing form. I did the markers first and then filling in those markers. It's not unlike what we do when we write to picture. When you have a film, you've got a structure. When you have a dance, you're working with a choreographer, you have a structure. You've got to fill it in. The history of music is such that there's plenty of examples for us to analyze, pick apart a little bit. You don't have to be a maniac. You don't have to know what the chords are. It doesn't have to be a harmonic analysis, just a structural analysis. In fact, you could stip, sit there with the stopwatch and go like, oh, there's 15 seconds of this, and then there's 35 seconds of that. It works. I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe. We're approaching 1,000 subscribers to this channel. Very exciting for me. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be able to do this work with you. I'm curious about what you think about this idea, the structural contrafaction. I just like saying structural contrafaction. I'll see you next time.